Okay, here's my final airport update before I pack it all away for the Christmas season here and give my wife our dining room table back for a little while. And uh, this update is kind of the main reason why I went this route to my airport. I was uh, making a bunch of my American Eagle fleet, kind of building it up mostly with the ATRs. I was also kind of rounding up some ERJ 145s, which are really hard to find. And I made a custom ERJ-135 and along with my Saab 340s I just really wanted somewhere where I could park all these commuter aircraft and my San Diego airport wouldn't have accommodated that level of uh, regional traffic. So here is my update with my old school American Airlines and American Eagle aircraft. I still have the same three concourses. I've got my commuters, uh, a couple RJs, and my mainline uh, American fleet. Okay, getting with the commuters. I've got a bunch of ATRs now, both the 42s and 72s. The 72s, uh, I have two Gemini 200s, one right there, and then this one over here is also a Gemini 200. And my two Herpa 1200s are the six bladed prop ATR 4, uh, 72s, one right there, and that one over there getting loaded up. The rest of these ATRs are ATR 42s, and they were all made uh, either by the JC Wings blank ATRs or finding a couple of the random ones on eBay, uh, stripping off the old libraries and putting on the new decals. The decals are by a company called Nazca. They're fairly easy and um, reliable decals to put on these aircraft. I know some decals are a little higher quality than others. Uh, for the most part, they came out. You can tell if you look real closely at them, the decals for uh, the decal aircraft are a slightly darker tint red than the ones that are professionally made from Herpa or from Gemini. Uh, the other stuff I've done to my Gemini models, my two ATR-72s, they came with the original six-bladed uh, props, although they're not, they weren't very high quality, especially when you compare it to the Herpa models. And I really wanted some of the four-bladed uh, ATRs, so. I custom made these propellers. So both my Gemini 200 HR-72s have the four, four bladed props, as you can see right there. This one as well. All right. And if you look at a couple of my atr 42s most of them are just the standard American Eagle livery. This thing comes up. They're all about the same. They're most three of the four I've made were with the standard four-bladed prop. Uh, the the six-bladed prop one I don't have on the airport right now because I ran out of space. The six-bladed prop one I have some custom decals on it for the 500 ATR, and then this ATR over here I put the custom Virgin Islands flag on the back. All right. And then I've got two Saab 340s. Those are Herpa models as well. So I, up. I really like those Saab models. And those are the commuters. Still have nine gates. All of them are being used. You got the two Saab 340s and then the seven currently uh, Super ATRs and ATR 42s. All right, then moving over to my RJs. I have currently three CRJ 700s at this airport with this library. I've got two ERJ 145s, and those ones are the tricky ones to find. You have to pay a little more to get those two. Get one right there, and this one over here parked. And then I also made a custom ERJ 135. I made that from a uh, BMI model, it was a JC Wings for the, the British Airline BMI. I stripped off the tail uh, livery, it was the Star Alliance one, and I applied my decals again from NASCA for, uh, they were ERJ-145 decals, I had to kind of cut them down a little bit to fit the ERJ-135, which is a little shorter, but again, it came out pretty well. All right, and there's all my RJs. And then moving on to one of my favorite libraries, these are definitely some of my prize models, these uh, old school polished American Airline models. I've been building my, my fleet really slowly, kind of snatching them up as I can, as I find them and as I can afford them, since they usually fetch a much higher price. 
Uh, I've got a bunch of MD-80 series aircraft, both Hogan, Jet X, and Gemini. Again, whichever ones I can, I see for good prices that I can afford, I, I'll pick those up just because I really like those old school American Airlines and uh, Mad Dogs. Here's one of my Hogan models, Gate 23. At Gate 24, I have taxiing inbound my in-flight 200, 727, 100 series aircraft. I've got so far my lone American Airlines 738 in the polished livery, getting uh, fueled up at Gate 27. And then kind of my the main portion of my Mad Dog fleet. Here's my Jet X, I'm, I'm working together, MD-80. Here's one of my Gemini 200, MD-82s. Another one of my Hogan models. And moving over to this side, my last MD-80 is sandwiched here between my 767-300 and my 757-200. That's another Gemini 201. The Gemini model is definitely the highest quality of the three. And uh, this, these are all second edition releases. I know there's the first edition has had some real bad tarnishing issues, but I have not seen that with any of the second edition uh, MD82s. All right, continuing over here where we left off, uh, one of my top three favorites as far as my models is my Gemini 200 727 200 series, uh, parked at gate 30. My two American Airlines 757 200s. The first one is the One World Library, and the next one was a little harder to find. Is the standard uh, old school polished 757 uh, 200 getting pushed back. There's my second Mad Dog I showed you, and then rounding up at my wide body gate is my American Airlines 767 300 getting loaded up. That's it. That's rounding out the big three airlines of the U.S., United, Delta, and now American. And uh, once I connect, after probably the holidays, if I can successfully connect my other terminal that you have that I've seen in my other videos with this one, I'll probably lay it out behind this, find some other space to put it since my table is pretty much maxed out. And that will be the next major milestone. All right.